G'day folks, Andy here from McDowell Manor. Try going to Carbonaria, Tetragonilla is the proper name now. Now my objective is to get this fairly straight. This is a box system that personally I refuse to use, I must admit, uh, because of the sheer destruction it de does to the bees. Okay. He's ready to go. Look, he's got reflexes like a cat. Oh, this is a perfect, per perfect stage. And I can lay this over now. The, this should be a spiral. Lisa, do you remember whether these ever had a, a clear spiral? I don't think it's ever been opened before, unless you opened it once. Because you see how it's <laughs> different. It is a bit, isn't it? It's not the. It's not the. What I call a full spiral. I, 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 my belief is it's likely. Uh, to be a hybrid between these are the ones that took over my hive. Remember? Remember? Oh, remember they, they, yeah, they took over. yeah, they're invaders. They're so maybe the they invaders. are. So, so when it, you say hybrid between two different types, of... Hocking, tetragon in a Hawking's eye and tetragon in a Carbonaria. So they, they now can... this this is showing characters characteristics consistent with Hawkins eye. Okay. I'm trying to get a project going. Okay. Uh, to look at just that. So do you looking think they, at the DNA. They might uh, be. And you, so they, they need to breed, do they, Bob? Yes. <coughs> oh. I've got something to say. Well you can see how it's breaking up there. Yeah well it's mm. not it's not your normal spiral at all, mm. no. Uh, and uh, so, would the honey uh, taste different? Can I have oh, yes. a bit lower? Yes, there's honey on the table here. Yes. But this is why I dislike your system. That honey has got nowhere to go but down through the, the nest. Any bee that gets drenched dies. Uh, forward flies, small hive beetle, and surfer flies are attracted by the smell of that uh, broken uh, structure. I dislike this process intensely and I, I will admit to not with my own hives I, well, I literally don't have, it, have any with this system. Now, what I'm doing now is just trying to make sure I've got space for the separators. Right. A few, few bees squashed as I obviously put. And just watch it, bees. Put one box down. Separated down. Now, the separator is left in from the edge for a very definite purpose. The, our, one of our main parasites, the surfer fly, lays in small crevices. Uh, uh, and a large crevice is just no use to it. Uh, it, it and it can't get its ovipositor in as far is where that uh, the, the tight fit is. Uh, the other predators the queen by the way is highly likely to be down in that bottom section with that young brood. So you've now got two separators on that bob, a plastic one and a wooden one, yeah? Yes. 
Now I'm shifting to stainless steel away yep. from the plastic. Uh, I still use wood, uh, the pine. Uh, I, because I all of a sudden realised that they've got zero emissions pine. Which is, why, yeah, right. which is why, which is which is why I went away from pine in the first place. Once, once I found there was zero emission pine, all was good. Uh, I could, I could use pine. Well, now I put this. The bees will very quickly seal down all these edges, and that is their primary. Defence to surface flies because if 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 it was the season for surface flies, <coughs> they they would try to lay in these seams, and the eggs would hatch three days it takes, uh, and the bees have got three days to seal before the eggs larvae start moving in, uh, and the bees only yeah. accomplish that very easily. Then we simply put the lid. Now the lid, this lid was, I, I will say, it's designed by ants. Uh, might sound strange, but I made the lid. The rubber is to keep light away from this so that the bees don't just sit, cover it up with resin. Ants like getting in there because it's warm. But then in summer, it got too hot and they kept taking the larvae, their larvae down to the, to the ground so I figured it was too off the bees. A lot of timber, insulation and the ants would actually nest up there. Like, like now you have queens up there. That, that also means I'm not, not scared of... I will, I will put a lot of tape around the seams. I think every single beekeeper does this as a guarantee. Uh, I don't believe it's necessary with this box, but only a, a very courageous stingless beekeeper puts a box together without doing this. We're really asking for trouble. Now, with this box, if something does go wrong, because you can see in here, if foreign fly do get in, you can see their activity inside. There is fly just about two thirds the size of the smaller of the single speed, very fast moving. It is possible to put a, a trap in there to catch them. Now, and that completes that box. So what I'll do. This one will be the hard one because there's, with the other one, other box, there's a fixed, mm. one fixed one loose. This one had one too loose. Now that's come loose. And there's no queen there? Uh, I don't think the queen will be here, but there will be queen cells. So there's only one queen in there, one part, uh, isn't it? Now having said that, there is a qu queen cell, uh, uh, yeah, there is the queen cell right here. There. Which is interesting, and, and, and that is clearly hybrid because I can't work out what to do with, with the brood. So that's the two hives, the original hive uh, and the new split. Uh, now Bob's gone out of his way to put them side by side and he was explaining the logic for that is that any bees that were out foraging um, are likely to join the new split which will build up the numbers. Is that correct, Bob? Yes, uh, um, they'll, they'll, go, they'll even up the numbers because the first one, back, the first colony that was back in position got most and it, it's been to put to the higher position. So the second one that's back in position is getting uh, the extra numbers now. Fantastic.